Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in on day two of Radicchio Week, part of our um, winter vegetable sagra uh, that has turned into a winter long of programming. Last week, we had uh, Garlic Week. Uh, if you missed any of those, you can watch them where you're watching this right now on YouTube. Um, there's a whole playlist for uh, the Winter Vegetable Sagra. You can watch all of these also um, recorded as well after the fact. Um, I'm excited today to welcome my friend Davide Zimolo, who is coming to us live um, from Italy. It's seven o'clock in the evening there. Uh, Davide is in northeast. Um, he's in the northeast part of Italy in um, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, uh, where hi Davide, where Hello. he is a uh, he works for a farming nonprofit as well as he is a farmer himself. Um, uh, I got to meet Davide when a group of us that you may have heard of the Radico expedition. We traveled to Italy, about 22 of us, uh, farmers and chefs and other um, radicchio advocates, <laughs> went to, to Italy uh, and we visited a lot of seed growers and farmers. And Davide was one of our chaperones. His English is impeccable and, <laughs> and he knows a ton about farming. So he was just perfect. And he also is just a really pleasant person to be with. So um, he was so generous to spend a lot of time with us uh, and take us around to farms, uh, including his uh, mentor, Andrea Piton, who showed us um, some breeding work that he was doing uh, with Radicchio and some really interesting brassicas that he's growing um, that we don't have here in the US that's important in the region that they live. Um, so it's been really cool to have this relationship with Davide um, where um, just communicating with people we normally wouldn't be able to. And like, for instance, the um, uh, Fialaro brassica that they grow, uh, he got a lot of recipes for us from the area. And so those will be distributed um, and kind of promoted about next year when we start seeing more of that on the market here, at least definitely in the Western part of Oregon and Washington, folks are gonna be growing that and we'll be able to tell people what to do with it and give them some history. Thanks to you, Davide, I really appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, that's, I think, what I was going to say for the introduction of, you know, how we met. And then um, you also participated in, I guess, the Jazz, which was an event that Mirta, our friend um, also from Northern Italy, uh, put together. And you showed us a lot of things that you grow on your farm. Um, and then during Rad TV, we did a part that... TV that was called Como Se Dice, which is like, how do you say? And it's like one thing that we found when we went to Italy, even though we were in very cl close proximity to different places, everyone calls Radicchio uh, as well as other things by different names, which, you know, already you're trying to keep up with understanding what you're saying in Italian. And then there's all these regional dialects that change five miles down the road. So uh, we did these little segments and you guys can watch this on YouTube if you wanted to. It's really cute. All, like, so we had maybe five different Italians from different areas say, tell us how they talk about radicchio in their area. And Domine did a really great one. It kind of went viral. So <laughs> like <I'm> <laughs> your video, because I mean, well, it was super fantastic because you talked so much about the different dialects just in your little region, in your area. Um, and then you brought in your grandparents, which was so cool. So we were out in the field and your, and your farm. You took us into the house and showed us the bean soup that your grandmother um, makes for you. Uh, and that just to let people know, if you go back on YouTube to watch the Como Se Dice part with Davide, you, the, I put the recipe also. You gave us the recipe. So we put grandma's recipe in there, the bean soup with the radicchio on top. Radicchio. Is this what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So Perfect. it was really great. And so then we asked, you know, you want to make a longer one with your grandparents. Um, and so that's what we're going to watch today. But 
Um, before we watch it, is there anything you want to tell people at, ahead of time while they're so that they know before they start watching it? Uh, no, not really. I just, I mean, um, no, let's go ahead and let's watch it. Okay, well, watch it. Um, I just wanted to remind people you're watching on YouTube. Post any of your questions that you have there. I'll be looking at that. I'll tell Davide what those are afterward, and we'll talk about um, what we're going to see here cooking with his grandparents um, in northeastern Italy. We'll turn off our cameras, and Abba will take it away. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I just stopped at the garden right quick in this very cold and rainy day. Actually, snowed a little bit this morning. Uh, I just stopped to harvest some nice radicchio and then we're gonna cook it together later on. Well, here we go. This is the radicchio patch. Last time I showed it to you, still had a lot of Treviso Precoce and Variegato di Lusia uh, growing, but uh, I harvested all of it and all my amazing customers ate it already. Uh, I still have two kinds of radicchio at the field. Uh, this is the population that I was telling you about last time. There's so much diversity as you can see. There's red ones, light ones, big ones, small ones, and then they already had different times, so just gonna go through it and harvest a couple of heads. One recipe, and then I'm gonna harvest some of this top, this kind over here. This is a Verona type uh, called Rosso de Lustella that uh, I got a seeds from my friend Andrea Pinton. I would ideally harvest it, uh, start harvesting it on Christmas or something like that in a month time. Uh, but for the sake of for today, I mean, it's still good. Uh, pretty small. It's not 100% ready, but still gonna harvest some of it for an amazing recipe that we're gonna cook together. finished harvesting the radicchio. We got all different kinds and we're ready to go to my grandparents' house. And we'll have my grandma cook two amazing simple recipes for us. Ciao nonna, ciao nonno, se non arrivati. Oh, ciao Pizzo. <laughs> ciao, ciao. So, Dai, presenteve. Oh, mi sono Luisina Brataliera, ho 70 anni, sono nata in Veneto, sono trapiantata in Friuli dal, eh, dal 70 71, Madonna quanti anni che verrà. Dal 71 sono felice sposata, sono felicemente sposata col, col mio metto, qua da tanti anni. Col cuoco. Da, 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 da tanti anni, no, stiamo bene insieme. E siamo orgogliosi dei nostri nipoti, con sei nipoti, poi tra, eh, lui, Davide è più grande. Boh, abbiamo la, la nonna Gigia e dopo? E il nonno Guido, Masolin, di origine veneta. Però anche un po' furlando. Eh. Tra, 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 Però, nato, nato, in Friuli, Friuli, nato in Friuli. Nato in Friuli, ma di origine veneta tutta, sia che da padre che da madre. 
Però contene un poco eh, della vostra infanzia, de come, che, perché ieri si dicevamo se de fa mea contadina tutti e due. Contadini tutti e due. Sì. E la polione anche adesso è stata, sa, mi l'avevo mai papà, gli avevi i capi, gli avevi i trattori, e gli avevi la stalla, gli avevi solo sei buche, però bastava per far bisogno, per latte, per, eh, per formaggio. E, e dopo mettevi sì, il tuo e viti, perché gli aveva i viti, e già sì. adesso non è come adesso, sa che adesso da tutte le macchine e robe, aveva, mi, mi mandava a buttare il verde rame sulle viti, gli aveva una, una botte trainata dalle mucche, e sì. mia mamma aveva una pompa e il povero aiutava mio papà a buttare il verde rame e le viti. Eh. Dopo che aveva l'orto e coltivava anche l'oro, radicio, era... Eh, doveva la stare, Era solo due tipi di radicio, era radicio verde col, con le radici, che si mangiava con le radici. E dopo, poi chiaro, che si faceva insalata. E dopo era... Um, metteva le verde d'inverno, metteva i cavoli. Cavoli. E sì. non invece voi cosa, cosa coltivavi, sì? Uguale, steso. E l'orto non mancava mai. Era radicio. E dopo cosa che avevi? Bestie che avevi anche il porcel? Eh sì, sì galline, conigli. Mi papà, mio papà faceva, si copava lui il portmaiale. Mm. E allora faceva il... Si saccava la carne. I rodellini, faceva le luganiche. Il figadei che era quel fegato che faceva, che adesso non lo usa più, non lo so fa più. Però era... Era buono. Sì, sì, sì salami. Ma no, de, de, de putei cosa mangiavi sì, quando ieri si... Sì, Pan e senza niente. <ride> Mi resta de, de dei de fagioli tutta la settimana, no? Tutta la settimana mi resta dei fagioli. De domenica la pasta, e allora la faceva tante volte più filadini del por, della gallina perché usava il brodo eh, eh. Eh, per la sera. E adesso giorno con gli l'anteriore della gallina faceva il subito e faceva la, la pasta, ma poche volte perché... Stesso menù anche il nostro. Eh, ma perché è di Veneto, tutti e due, il Veneto eh, faceva così, eh, era la nostra, nostra tradizione, no? la nostra famiglia. Eh. Quindi mi è stato il fasioi? Tutta la settimana. Tu ogni giorno, mattina e sera. Ma, ma no, di sera il fasioi, il fasioi conditi con l'arto, eh. e dopo la fettina del crudelin, o una, una salsiccia, la costa, quando qui abbiamo appena coperto il maiale, che abbiamo visto la costa, abbiamo ah, fatto di costa, ma sempre con radicio, con di col l'arco. E in sanguinè? Anche, anche. Ma questo mangiava a mezzogiorno di una minestra. Eh. <ride> e dopo la nonna, finì di mangiare al pranzo, la ne mandava su per il fighero. Ma da figli? Ah, non mandare la frutta. Perché siamo ancora fame, no? <ride> e allora finì, finì le stomiche. E le mandava a mangiare figli, sì. con susini, e sì. muri. Ma dai, dai, andiamo avanti, parliamo di risotto, perché sennò... Sì, sì. Io non lo so, dai, cosa fanno, cosa metto. Va bene, dai. Minestra del pasoi, no? Eh. Adesso metti l'olio, gli metti, ma una volta gli metteva eh, un tocco di... Eh, diciamo, eh. scorsi che era, era la pelle del maiale sopra, il, solo non con l'ardo, solo l'estratto sopra di pelle, senza il pelo naturalmente, e gli metteva dentro sulla minestra e li condiva con quello. Condiva la minestra. Mi toccava a me mangiare il pelo, allora, allora la mia la mia no? Ti, ti pensa 70 anni fa? Mi casa di scuola, fame. Che altri aveva una fetta di musetta, mi avevo lo scorso. Eh, tua nonna Però aveva non... il pelo, allora ti ho cambiato. Perché lo metteva dentro così? Eh, senza, sì, eh. ma, era, che, ma che buon che era. E no? era duro di cavarsi del duro. Ma no? che buon che era, la fame era. era no? Il raccolto eh. veniva via. Sì, sì, sì. Dopo mi, mi stavo bene perché noi aveva il formaggio che portava a casa dalla latteria, praticava le mucche. E lo portava in latteria. In... Eh, ma anche i nostri aveva formato. Mi portava a casa, 7, 8, 10 forme di formai. Lo metteva in cantina, lo metteva in cantina e dopo si mangiava ai bordi a tutto eh. l'anno. E dopo non ne mancava, boh. Ma mi andavo, mi andavo a rubare il salame, mi diventavo matto, eh. andavo, dove si ripicava sulla stanga in cantina. No, no. E, 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 mi, e mi andavo su con la sedia che fregava un tocco, sai, una donna santa. Perché era, bisognava tenerlo da conto, doveva continuare tutto l'anno, no? Però mi ero fragato, fame nera. Alright, so this is the first recipe, risotto 
called Vavicchio. Uh, usually you would use uh, Radicchio di Treviso Tardivo, but um, I don't have it, so we're using, you can use also Treviso Precoce or any other red Radicchio. In this case, we are using El Rosso dello Stella that I just harvested. Compre qui ingredienti che abbiamo olio, eh, burro, riso, scalogno e aglio, radice, sale e pepe, sale, pepe e brodo vegetale. Ok. A Partì. posto. Via. Eh, andiamo avanti. Oh, qui adesso ti fa squagliare. Sì. Just melting the butter with the olive oil. Is olio di oliva? Sì, sì. Ok. And this is the vegetable broth. Just with carrots, celery, and onion. So, adesso abbiamo messo l'aglio e il scalogno con un soffritto. Ma perché ti usi il, sia il burro che l'olio? L'ho messo un po' di burro perché si come che radice è un po' amaro l'olio e il burro che porta via un po' l'amaro, l'amarogno lo di radice e deve essere un po' più dolce. Oh. Quindi adesso ora devo mettere il riso. Adesso metto il riso. Adesso pian piano lo facciamo tostare che diventa trasparente. Ma che tipo di riso dobbiamo Questo usare? Questo è l'erborio, è riso biologico. Ecco, adesso pianino pianino se è, è rosola. Infatti ti vedi che abbiamo usato il scalogno, non la cipolla, perché la cipolla la si più forte e scalogno le, do, le dolce e loro aiuta anche il riso a essere... Il risotto perché viene buono è sempre meglio tostarlo perché gli dà il, il sapore che dà... No, no, questo dice, sta venendo buono. No, 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 il procedimento è esatto. Te vedi, adesso bisogna sempre tostarlo bene, adesso quando che comincia a cantare senti che ti sfrigola dentro la te. E allora gli aggiungiamo un po' di vin nero. Adesso lo facciamo, lo facciamo evaporare bene e quando che è tutto assorbito e più piano aggiungendo il brodo vegetale lo portiamo a cottura. Vedi comincia a fare sotto, vedi? E comincia a caramellarsi. Ecco. A questo punto aggiungiamo il nostro radicchio. Ecco. In Veneto come si chiama gli attrezzi questo qua? Questo qua è una farsora. Questa qua è una farsora. Farsora, si vede. La farsora, questo qua è il cazzo. Cosa è il cazzo? È del cucciare a del legno. Ah. Che si usa per, perché va bene il cucciare del legno. No? Per cui abbiamo il cazzo, la farsora. Ecco, questa è la cazza. La cazza, la cazza sì. Eh, in, Veneto in Veneto si chiama cassa qua in, in Bisiac invece è il cop, il cop. Ecco. allora ghesontiamo un po' di più piano mettiamo un po' di brodo vegetale e adesso pianino portiamo a cottura e poi adesso questo che metti metto sale. un po' di sale e qui che vuole un po' di pepe che fa contattivo che ti piace qui no il pepe che fa contattivo e un po' di pepe se vedo quello salt e il pepe black pepper if you like. Non mi lo faccio come che facevi una volta. Perché adesso gli mette peperoncino, gli mette spezie, gli mette cipolla, gli mette spezie diverse. Questo è come che lo facevi, sì, come che lo faceva mia mamma. No, no, cosa fa qua adesso? Ha creato formaggio per buttare per radice. 
anche questo tira via l'amaro Se è veloce, no? Cosa siamo stati? Mezz'ora, neanche. 20 minuti, 25 minuti, 20, 20 minuti. Mezz'ora in tutto, rollando il, il scalone. Adesso, adesso chiudiamo. Mettiamo. Ecco. E mantecchiamo. Questo è della cremosità, la radice, vedete? Pronto? Pronto. Buon appetito. Anche a voi. Grazie, trattato. Uh, for, the, for the next recipe we only need pork lard. Questo sì. è lardo. A, a, a quadriettini, è piccolo. Ecco, questo qua basta. And this is basically going to be the dressing for the radicchio salad. Now we are going to put the lard on the pan for the radicchio salad dressing. Now how do we call this? Lardo. Lardo and then it becomes... Fosui. Fosui. Fosui, man. Perché una volta olio appunto era poco e allora i contadini si usava il maiale per condire il radiccio e si usava questo. E vedi che viene fuori? E sotto c'è l'olio che dopo serve per condire, se vedi? Quindi comincia e comincia a diventare troppo, a diventare troppo cante, perché in bocca se no ti senti il tenero dell'arbo, non va bene. Sì. Se è così che vedi il tempo maroncino. Ecco, ancora un pochettino, poi c'è pronto. Salt. Aceto di mele, apple cider vinegar, guarda, guarda, and instead of olive oil, i fossili. <laughs> That's it, the salad is ready. Buon appetito di nuovo. Sì, grazie. Ecco. Wow, buono. That was fantastic. <laughs> I want to go to your grandparents' house to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had a few questions. Yeah. So do you got, I guess, in your childhood um, and now, I guess, you live close to them. Do you eat often with your grandparents and did you eat dishes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Especially growing up, um, I spent a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm really lucky. I've like all my uh, grandparents are. Um, pretty young and mm -hmm. healthy so uh, I got to spend a lot of time with all of them but especially this couple I um, since I was very small I spent a lot of time there and just, I now I go less often mm -hmm. uh, but during my school years I pretty much 
uh, went there for lunch uh, every day uh, during the week. And this is your mom's or your dad's parents? Uh, it's my mom's parents, yeah. Parents. And you're the eldest of the six grandchildren. So yeah. Yeah. like the, a very special, the, being the daughter's child, yeah. the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, we're getting some questions, but I wanted to add, I, one thing that, well, one thing I was really happy about watching is this is exactly the way I make risotto. So when your grandfather said, this is the right procedure. <laughs> now I'm doing it. Um, but what was very present in both of these recipes that we're always trying to tell like people here in the US that haven't grown up with radicchio is that the presence of like fat, right? Like the dairy, the butter, the cheese, the lard, all these things like the fat, like they mention it many times, like kind of rounding out that bitterness and like mellowing it out a little bit. So it was cool to see them doing it in, in both of those dishes. And then like the lard thing was such a, so different. I mean, I guess we think maybe, you know, bacon or pancetta that we would use or something yeah. like full blown lard, cooking it up and throwing it in there is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore. Um, we, <laughs> uh, we had it like, that's not a dish that my uh, grandma usually cooks. Mm -hmm. um but um you know it, it's something that she would always eat growing up yeah. um so uh w you know when i told her uh let's make a video like this and then you know she thought it would be cool to just make that recipe which is just like you know a very easy quick thing to do uh but when we 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 had her for lunch the other day and it was just like i, I mean our like we're not uh, like our bodies are not, <laughs> uh, you know, ready to eat straight up lard anymore. Like, you know, their <laughs> stomachs were, <laughs> you know, 50 years ago uh, in the countryside. Yeah. It was really cool to, that you asked them those things. And I appreciate that, that you asked kind of about their childhood and what that was like and what they were eating. It seems like they were both very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> My children are always very hungry, you know, and then it's like, um, yeah, we eat what we have <clears throat> and that's what they had then. And it was, I like the part with the, your grandfather said that his grandmother would just say, climb the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's awesome. And, um, you know, I feel very fortunate to have had, um, you know, it, you know, they would always tell me stories like that, especially my grandma would always, uh, you know, during lunch, just uh, sometimes go on and tell stories from her childhood and things like that. And I don't know, I think it uh, gave me a lot of insight, you know, just, I learned a lot of things and uh, learned how to appreciate food. Um, yeah. Um, somebody does ask on YouTube, uh, they mentioned again, like the butter and um, the Parmesan being a way to reduce bitter. And we know the lard too. Are there other ways that you can think of that in the things that you eat with radicchio of ways to like kind of curb that bitterness that you pair it with? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't really uh, have an answer. Maybe um, tomorrow when uh, you have, uh, chefs, uh, <laughs> they can give you an answer because I mean, um, I love bitterness and like a lot, all the people like bitter taste and a lot of people here, they're, um, they're used to that taste. So it's not usually a, an issue that, um, mm -hmm. comes up a lot and yeah, uh, I don't really have an answer for that, but yeah, I know. Cause he, I feel like the difference is here in the U S we kind of think about all the things, right? Where it's like, wait, maybe like the, what, what your grandparents were saying is like, we didn't have olive oil, so we use this. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like it's still very regional in Italy. And so when I think about making um, radicchio, I like I made a pasta with radicchio the other day and I used anchovy, but it's mm -hmm. maybe anchovy isn't very popular in the area that you live in. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it is, it is popular. Um, I mean, I think that, um, you know, radicchio uh, here, it's really just a winter vegetable. So mm -hmm. like in summer, you never 
uh, eat it, or at least in the past, he would never eat it. But like still now, it's not common at all to eat it uh, in the spring or summer. Um, mm-hmm. so, and, and and at the same time, uh, so you know, like in winter, uh, it's colder and it calls for you know fatter dishes and cooked dishes and also traditionally people would um you know butcher the pig in the winter so you would have those fats and the radicchio kind of you know ready at the same time mm-hmm. and it's uh, i mean i think it's not it it, it it they ended up together out of necessity rather than uh you know they bring out the flavor the like the right <laughs> way yeah. That makes sense. But yeah. Um, let's see, what other vegetables pair well with radicchio? For those of us that aren't ready for risotto with all radicchio, uh, squash or carrots. Like if you were to make that ri- risotto dish, is there anything that you would pair with the radicchio? Oh man, I don't know. We should have, uh, no, I don't know. I know my mom is watching, so she can uh, write in the chat uh, if she has the answer. <laughs> um, I don't know together. Like, I mean, we are, uh, I think, fairly traditional in the way that we cook here. So, you know, you make risotto with squash, pumpkin, and mm-hmm. or risotto with mushroom. Um, mm-hmm. So we're not really big uh, when it comes to experimenting and putting a lot of things together. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes the, um, simple things, you know, like just, yes. you know, just like five rat, five ingredients and putting them together, uh, gives up yeah. that, um, perfect, uh, recipe. But I mean, I think it's, it's just, I think it comes down to experimenting. I don't know what, um, yeah, maybe nuts, some kind of like adding nuts, something like that, um. Uh, to the risotto would be nice. Uh, I think I f- really feel like when I've gone to Italy, I very much experienced what you have just said, where it's like, there's not a lot of mixture of things. It's like, this it, This is risotto with um, radicchio and that's it. And then, or you would have like zucca, like squash yeah. with radicchio. You like to, to change, like to put it together would be my friend Salvo from Sicily would say, it's a little disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's like, and it also, it's like everything kind of served as a course. So when you get like the risotto, like you guys did what you did. And I feel like it wasn't for the presentation. It was like, you would eat your dish of risotto first, mm-hmm. would eat yeah. the entire dish of risotto. And then you would move on to salad, which is, you know, typically the last thing you eat in Italy is salad. Um, I guess for digestion purposes, um, I don't know, but, um, and it's like, there's not a lot of mixing of things and you don't really often see, like, I remember that same person I bought Salvo in Sicily was, I bought some like dried mushrooms, porcinis maybe at a market and I came home and we kept in touch and he said, what did you do with your porcinis? And I said, well, I made, and I brought back Albario rice too from Italy. And I was like, I made a risotto and he's like, oh, great, fantastic how did you make it? And I had to explain the steps and he was like, okay, brava. Okay. So all right. And he's like, well, what else did you make it with? And I told him salmon. And then I told him like these, you know, like whatever, I cook some greens and he was like, okay, which did you have first? And I was like, oh, well we, you know, it was all on the plate at once. And yeah. he's like, no. <laughs> so like this mixture of things. And even though I'm like, no, like a taking a bite of like a mushroom, risotto with a bite of salmon is fantastic but it was something that he was like no do not do this <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> so I feel like it's like in Italy it's like it's very much about like letting these individual ingredients kind of like shine through and experience them without a lot of mixing of things there's like like you said like there's very few ingredients in a dish yeah it's like, yeah and the tendency is that one you know just culturally i mean yeah it, it, it it's a cultural thing more than uh you know i just even like what you're saying of eating the different dishes separately um it's just i don't know it just people do it that way and 
Uh, I'm not as fundamentalist as others, but, uh, uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's, it's, uh, I think it comes down to how you connect with food and how you approach the, you know, mm-hmm. eating exper- experience. It's not like let's stuff everything in the plate and then eat it fast, mm-hmm. but it's pace it and have one thing first and then everything else after. Yeah. And, and that teaches you something, I think, and, you know, and then you can have everything together and experiment, but, you know, still having the mindset of, you know, eating it slow and with yeah. others. And, yeah. I love that. I think the only one problem with it, when you go to someone's house in Italy and you get this dish, say like you get the risotto and then you're like, okay, it's a lot of risotto and you eat it all, but you don't know what's coming next. <laughs> and yeah. many, many courses that are still to come. I, I when, and you weren't with us this day, but when we went to visit Levantia Seed, we walked in and they had this display and they were showing us about, you know, we were there to visit about radicchio and they also, they, they, they offer a lot of radicchio seed as well as squash. And so it was all these things that were displayed that were, they were just like the aperitivo, but yeah. a lot of people that had never eaten in Italy, it was like, they didn't know. It was like, and they loaded up and they ate all this stuff. And it's like, no, we're going to have an entire like five yeah. meal after. Yeah. We really have to watch it because eating risotto is very filling. And if you eat all of it, yeah. and you're like, you think that's it, and that's lunch, it's like, no, 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 there's all this food that you still have to eat. That's the only danger, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the same experience that, with, you know, just if you offer just, you know, oh, let's have some bread with prosciutto or different, like other really, you know, heavy flavorful cold cuts and wine and then you have that and you're like okay let's go and eat now i say what isn't it this <laughs> lunch yes so someone did suggest um uh risotto uh, risotto you know um, radicchio risotto going really well with sausage i can see that oh yeah 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 good. yeah 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 um Okay, let's see. Uh, Siri, Jason's wife, you've met Jason, uh, asks, are there other regional radicchio uses and uh, recipes that you could share that you, uh, how do people use radicchio in your area other than these, you know, two ways? You've... Um, well, I think it's, again, it's, a, you know, simple recipe. So, you know, you, you just like, you can, Uh, grill it or you know cook it in the oven or uh, make salads now um it's not really traditional but I like um making a you know big salad sometimes for lunch with uh like even like pomegranate old like winter uh fruit like pomegranate or citrus fruit or apples uh, with also nuts or uh, hard cheeses again that's pretty you know easy recipes um, also lasagna, it's pretty good to make with, uh, with radicchio, uh, red radicchio again. Uh, that's, that's pretty good, uh, too. And yeah. And, um, do you eat it with pasta also? Like, yeah, yeah. You make it, um, it's pretty similar proceed, like this similar as the radicchio kind of like you make this, the sauce and then you just what a very simple mm-hmm. uh sauce like that you make just with radicchio and like garlic and onion mm-hmm. or shallots and make it creamy mm-hmm. and then just mix it with um with the pasta um it's often eaten with sausage as uh, people were suggesting um yeah like pasta or rice with uh, radicchio and sausage is very very common um yeah and also um i'm not um is it uh, the radic um cool poc, the, the the little green ones that you have it with uh hard boiled eggs in like at the end of winter okay that's, a, that's another traditional recipe um and now whole yeah. pock is the one that has the root attached the yeah mm-hmm. yeah are there any ways of like preserving? One thing that that um, you know we've I've seen before are like radicchio preserves in Italy, like in jars, um, kind of like a radicchio jam sort of 
Yeah, make like creams or um that was yeah, that was one thing that was really interesting uh, when we went to uh, that lunch with Levantia in near Kyoja. They yeah. were um, there was a lot of like cream. There was like sandwiches, like white bread, no crust, and like a creamy like spread with <laughs> in it. So there was a lot and like a lot of mousses and like little cups that were like creamy with radicchio. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, not familiar. Like I've never seen like my grandma make any of those. Uh, but you do find them like a lot of farms uh, process their, you know, radicchio. They, you know, they just use the like, percentage of it. They just bring it to laboratories and, you know, and they just make their line of uh, mm -hmm. cr radicchio creams. And uh, so I don't know exactly how they make it, but I, I assume it's a very simple uh, you know, standard procedure as you would make with other vegetables. And, but it's pretty, it's pretty good because, you know, you can use it for like appetizers and stuff like that and just mix it up and with, you know, different types of cheese, like, I don't know, mm -hmm. gorgonzola cheese or just experiment with combination, uh, combinations like that. Another thing we had after we had all of that creamy radicchio and then our four course meal. <laughs> At the end, we had this cake with radicchio that I had seen before in the Kyoja region. Uh, yeah. round. It had powdered sugar on the top, but it was a cake that was pretty simple, but yeah. had radicchio cut up in, you know, inside of it. Is that something you've ever seen where you are? What I mean, like a, like a savory? It was... Like a Kind of it was like a sweet cake, like a dessert cake. Oh, a dessert. No, I never, I've never had that. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, savory, like little pastries mm -hmm. with you know, radicchio in it, but never. Um, yeah. yeah. But also, also um, forgot to mention before, um, also for meats, uh, they go well with radicchio as um, just as a, I don't know, like, if you, um, how can I say, um, like stews is that, I think, mm -hmm. that like just a meat stew with, with radicchio cooked, so mm -hmm. it becomes really like red, blackish cream mm -hmm. that goes with the meat. That's another use of radicchio that um, it doesn't, I, I don't think um, it gets so bitter. Uh, I think you lose uh, most of the bitterness as you cook it, especially if you cook it with like a flavorful meat mm -hmm. and add spices too. Um, so I think that could be a good like, you know, entry level, uh, you know, rather than eating it raw, which is, you know, not everyone uh, mm -hmm. loves it as much as um, we do. <laughs> right. But, yeah. And I mean, do you feel like, I, I feel like I hear this from people here, but I don't know if it's true or not. You know, we eat a lot of radicchio salad in the United States, I feel like. Um, and we try to encourage people more to cook it. And then people here will say, yeah, in Italy, they mostly cook it. But is that true? Or is that, is it like half and half? And then I guess, which types um, are you doing? Like, are you using like Castle Franco and like the Rosa types as salad and then cooking like the Treviso? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it really varies, uh, between places and between families. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as, as you saw from the video, like our families are, they have kind of like a rural, like poor, background so it's like we're not really fancy trying to find that specific type of radicchio it's just like um so you know we're not really picky uh but usually like a, a light variegato one uh would usually end up in salads mm -hmm. um and the red ones mm -hmm. like you know like the treviso tardivo especially um, that, yeah, they would mostly go, uh, be used for cooking mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, we, that's, I was gonna say, we saw, we ate some, um, like pickled, like very quickly pickled, like Treviso, um, 
Tardivo when we were there. Yeah. And then tomorrow, Kathy, who you met with, there was a chef yeah. that was on the trip with us. She's going to make this recipe that was from an Italian that is from Padua um, mm-hmm. that lives in the U.S. now. But it's like you simmering water with vinegar and then she takes the Trevisa Prococe and cuts it in quarters and puts it in the, in the water for just a little bit, just to cook it down a little bit and kind of mm-hmm. it, and then takes it out and cools it. And then it's kind of eaten as um, an appetizer. Mm. You can just keep it in the fridge and you can pull it out and have it at aperitivo. And they take, and she takes like hard boiled eggs and crumbles it on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. I've had that before. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds really great. And I feel like my favorite part of Italian meals is aperitivo. Like, you know, like the, <laughs> all the little things. Because, because of the wine. Well, there's the wine and then there's that. And it's like, this is food. We don't need any more, you know, because there's such a wide variety that you get on those plates and things that are so unexpected, like a lot of little pickled things, like lightly pickled things like that. Yeah. Um, and then little frittatas and things like this that are just yeah. fun, you know? So I like this idea of like cooking it and kind of preserving it, having it in your fridge for a couple of weeks to eat off of, you know? I mean, I would probably- A thing that I never, hmm? um, the thing that I never seen before uh, was, uh, during the uh, RAD TV week, the, those events, I remember uh, one of the chefs making uh, sour crowd with- mm, mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting. I, I would I love to try that. It's, yeah. It's neat idea. Well, yeah, you could do it easy. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, yeah. <laughs> It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. um, Siri is asking if, um, how do many people in Radicchio find Radicchio to be too bitter? Like, do you hear people saying that nowadays yeah. or, yeah? Well, I think always, I mean, it's not a thing that everyone loves at mm-hmm. all. It's, I mean, it's part of the tradition, but it's, uh, especially now that people have access to uh, more vegetables, like imported vegetables or, you know, heated greenhouse vegetables in, in winter. Um, you know, it's, it, it, people are choosing like lettuce in February or January instead of, uh, Mm -hmm. radicchio. So I think, yeah, it's common. It's, but since it's, part of the tradition part of the culture is still around and people are used to it mm-hmm. more than maybe if you've never seen it and you have it for the first time they're like oh why should i start eating it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah how about pizza is it do you, do you ever see um people i guess in a restaurant or in a home like people cooking um either i guess they could either cook it and put it on pizza or just put it fresh at the end like you did on your your soup <laughs> i never seen it fresh but i definitely seen it uh cooked um yeah um yeah definitely um especially like more in places that have more choice uh it's not you know one of the you know five or ten most popular pizzas but you definitely you can definitely get it if you want to yeah you know, i feel like i've eaten it at um is it bonchi that's in um Rome. Oh, yeah, in Rome. they have the pizza that you can just buy by the slice and all these different types they do this at a funavrisa too i love this yeah. you find, and there's all these types of pizza toppings and you can just get little by the little square and so you can taste lots of different ones i feel like i've had it um like cook with red onion cooked down and like maybe balsamic some sort of vinegar mm-hmm. and then it was like on the pizza with some cheese yeah yeah i'm getting hungry now um, <laughs> <laughs> um let's see people are saying rodolini con radicchio prosciutto cotto e ricotta that sounds good a pizza <laughs> con radicchio e speck oh yeah good do you know what speck is Yes. You can tell everybody here if you want. I also have, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, no, I don't really know how to, well, it's a, it's a smoked uh, cold, cold cut, like it's kind of like prosciutto, uh, 
but it has a smoky taste. Yes. All the different cured porks of Italy. I love it. Um, yeah. So in the, they were talking about um, cotechino. Is that what they called it? The sausage? Yeah. Can you tell us about that sausage? Do you know? Yeah, it's basically just a different type of sausage. So it, when you butcher the pig, like you, you know, like you, um, when you do it, you remove all the cuts that, like, you know, for like the, like bacon or like ribs or whatever cut you want to just eat like that or like ham. Um, and then with everything else, you basically, so with the fat, with the skin, with the different intramuscular fats, with all the different muscles here and there, you um, put them in different buckets and then turn mm -hmm. those into different types of sausages. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, so basically there's the blood sausage uh, that my grandpa mentioned before. It's just basically with the blood and uh, with flour. It's basically the last, the, uh, the least type of, uh, least of value, val not value, I don't know how to say it, but like, it's like that. And then there's cotechino, you know, it's like really fatty. So it's made with like the layer, the fat layer that's under the skin mostly. So it's, I don't know if you ever had it, but it's it's very, very fatty compared to a sas sausage that has more muscle. Mm -hmm. The quino has way more fat. Mm -hmm. And um, so like the taste is very, it's like, it's much fattier. Right. Um, and then, so then sausage is like more fat, like, you know, there's more meat, mm -hmm. uh, let's say compared to fat. Mm -hmm. And then also salami, like the salami for like seasoning, it's mm -hmm. also, you know, different, like more muscles. And then everyone has different ratios to put in, but yeah, cotechino is mostly, it's like more fat, mm -hmm. uh, fatty sausage really. Yeah. They... And then here, here you would like in, um, in here in Friuli, um, it's typical to eat it with uh, brovada, or brovada, which is, um it it's turnip is it turnip the uh purple and white uh big ones yeah so it's fermented turnips uh with uh is in like wine uh with like you know with the, the yeah. leftover of the wine i can't remember what that's called for some reason we saw this at uh katarina's uh yeah farm makes it, yeah. and she was making that and we tasted it too and then you brought it um to the jazz too to yeah jazz. um the, like the pumice right the yeah. yeah yeah it's basically yeah yes hey, there's a when the chefs that was with us connor came back and he started he started making it <laughs> awesome me the other day and, and it was like i'm making that now so that's pretty cool. We got yeah. we all got very inspired in all the different ways that we ate things and saw how things were being grown. Someone actually asked, what does it take a lot of space to grow radicchio? So do you want to talk about kind of how your what your spacing is? Mm, well, it depends. Uh, I mean, Well, it depends on what type of radic you're growing, but generally it's not, um, it doesn't take too much space, especially if you're doing it for like, in, for like a household, like if you want to do it for your family. Um, I don't know. Uh, I grow it in like 100 foot, in 100 foot bed uh, that is about 30 inches wide. And I have uh, some types of radicchio. I, in that space, I make two rows of radicchio. So like two, and then I put it every 45 centimeters, which is, I don't know, like, what is it? Like 15, in, like 20 inches, mm -hmm. or something like that. Or yeah, 17 inches. Mm -hmm. um, but others, um, I can put them closer together, mm -hmm. just like lettuce basically. So I can do like three 
lines and put them quite close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I can, you know, you have hundreds in one of those beds. And even like in your, and in, in backyard, you know, even with a small patch, you can still have quite a good amount. When it's a, it's a plant that you harvest all of it, you know, just like, just like lettuce. It's not like a tomato plant that you can, you right. know, let it grow and have a lot of it. But uh, other than that, it doesn't take that much space at all. Do you do any of the forcing? Um, no, do you no. Unfortunately, not. I don't have the like place to do it. I don't have infrastructures, but I definitely uh, would like to start doing it. And and that requires space and requires, uh, you know, uh, you know, more space and yeah. more infrastructures. Yeah. Uh, but it is popular in your area, the Treviso um, Tardivo and like the, the Rosa di Grizia types and Rosa di Isotina, those are around yeah. your area? Yeah, well, uh, so now people, like farmers grow all of those three. Mm -hmm. um, so even Radicchio di Treviso Tardivo, now it's, it, it's not as specific as it was in the past, mm -hmm. um, like 50 years ago. Um, so Treviso Tardivo was only done in the Treviso area where they had the right um, conditions to do it. Uh, but now it's spread out and they do it here. But Rosa di Gorizia, it's really, it's like about 15 miles from here, it's Gorizia. Mm -hmm. And then Rosa Isontina, it's Isontina means from Isonzo and Isonzo is like, I mean, it's like 100 yards from here. So it's, yeah. this is the place. And yeah, so people, people do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not such a, I mean, um, how can I say? It's coming, it's coming, it's starting now. It's like coming back now. He hasn't, the Rosa Isuntina, Rosa di Gorizia, I wasn't so big years ago, mm -hmm. like when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What about the, I asked this to Andrea yesterday, it's like, what about the Rosa types, just the pink types that are like Rosalba, you know, all, all of those that just people in the United States have just gone completely bananas for. <laughs> Um, and, you know, I feel like there are pictures all over the internet and social media, uh, way before we could even get it here. And everyone was in the food world was calling it pink lettuce and, you know, all, all of it. So it's just like, people have gone completely bananas for this. Um, and Andrea was like, well, here, it's kind of like a specialty thing. We only eat it around like, you know, December and January. It's kind of for the holidays. People will make like a salad with it. They don't really cook it because it changes the color. Is that yeah. do you see very much of the pink types in your and in, like in Friuli? It's not very common okay. around here. Um, I don't see it as often. I think feel like it's more of a West thing, like in Verona, even like Mantova, like more uh, mm -hmm. toward the West. Um, here, like in extreme Northeast, right near Slovenia, mm -hmm. we don't have as much as as much tradition around radicchio as they do in veneto like we are not um as um you know they're not like in veneto every town has their own type and every farmer used to save their own seeds and there there's so much folklore around that but mm -hmm. here it's kind of we kind of have the influence of that and we grow different types of radicchio but it's not um as strong as there the, the pink radicchio i mean it made it here but it's grown by a few farmers here and there and you know you would buy it yes you would buy it for a salad for mm -hmm. you know, just eating it raw like you wouldn't buy it but it's kind of yes it's more like a i wouldn't say it's a delicacy but it's something you you know buy it once in a while it's not like a staple as you know, a red radicchio like a Treviso would be mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, people know how to 
they would cook it or eat it raw and 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 it, it is part it became part of the they called like late in the last decades it become part of the culture here too um yeah how far are you from the slovenian border oh really close it's about um like 10 miles even less uh 10 minutes yeah can you hear me yeah yes i can yeah 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 okay and how far are you from uh that tierra de jao that we went to the last farm we visited yeah oh well, i'm about 20 25 minutes mm -hmm. but we're kind of we would be driving kind of uh north well right. northeast so like along the border to get to his house that is really close to different mm -hmm. border well it's, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. It's so interesting to be, to experience such different places and different cultures. And when things are so close to one another, you know? Yeah. Have that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's really, it's really cool. Yeah. And like, I mean, I'm my generation, like, I like, feel like I have all these things that I'm telling you, like, I'm telling you them with like my perspective, which is already very mixed, you know, like I, sure, I grew up and like, hey, uh, I grew up here and grew up with this culture but um you know like in like in 90s and 2000 like you still had you know the internet or you'd right it's easier to go around so i met people from like even locally from like everywhere and just just it and so it's it all it, it's a it's mixing it's getting mm -hmm. mixed up yeah but it's cool to have that. Um, like here, the river is like really close. It's like I'm like it's very. It's, it's just here, and I hear we speak that dialect. It's Biziaco. It's like similar to the Venetian one. You cross the river in the other town over there. They speak a completely different language. It's called Friulano. It's like it has nothing to do with it, and it's literally on the other side of the river. And it's. I I know. I was thinking about that when you were asking your grandmother what things were called like the spoon and the ladle does she did you grow up hearing those words like or did she just when she left the veneto she just stopped using the words and then she's used dis different words in friuli well it's weird because she is from veneto mm -hmm. my grandpa is from a venetian family well, people from veneto his parents were but he was born and raised in friuli which is they speak friulano which is a different language and then they both moved in here, like around here in Bizacaria, which in like seven, 1971, 72. And there and here they speak a dialect. So it's like, there's Veneto, there's uh, Friuli, and then there's like the Bizacaria. So they moved to Bizacaria and they started, basically they started speaking a, a mixed language, a mixed thing you know just because they both uh knew the veneto which is similar to biziac so they spoke like that's what i like i grew up uh speaking biziac because like my parents were both from there my other grandparents were both born and raised in bizacaria so that's and my friends all spoke that dialect uh so my those those grandparents um Gigi guido that you met today they spoke Biziaco, basically they started speaking in like 71 and that's you know in after 20 30 years then i that's when they spoke with me but with you know words here and there uh taking back from their original mm -hmm. languages or um dialects and so this like i didn't know i never like i have never heard that those words that my grandma was saying mm -hmm. about well farsora that pan is the same mm -hmm. in biziac and in veneto so it's like i knew that one but the other i don't even remember it's like kasut kathut or whatever it is the, like the wooden spoon i had never yeah. like i never heard of it ever before and like not even my mom yeah or like you know people like that generation and like so like she you know just left it <laughs> in her childhood places.
it's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> it's hard enough, you know, trying to just learn, you know, a, a, you try to learn Italian, but then you get there and it's like, it's not really always what is spoken. <laughs> yeah. But then we like, yeah, I mean, you know, it makes sense in my mind and uh, kind of like, you know, proud of it. And just like, we think it's cool. So we think that everyone thinks it's cool, or at least I do. So like, it just start talking and then it's like, well, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's just, not that difficult it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know I, I go to Sicily a lot we'll wrap up here soon but I just want to say I go to, you know I go to Sicily and then I told somebody I was going to try to learn you know learn try and learn Italian they're like well it's not going to really help you here <laughs> you know <laughs> because you know and and I've had other Italians come to you know Sicily with me and they're like yeah it's kind of hard to understand people here <laughs> I don't know um, but I don't know. I think it's cool. I like it. I, no, no matter which part of Italian you're speaking or dialect, I don't know what you're saying. It sounds nice though. Yeah. <laughs> I can speak English. We'll prepare a good aperitivo and then everyone is happy. That's, that's the common language is food. You know, I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's cool. Like when you find Italians abroad or like in different situations, like you always bond around the food and it's mm -hmm. just it's something it's pretty cool you know just um yeah. yeah and making a lot of stuff and like making it very <laughs> abundant for everyone it's i mean it's something yeah i mean we're proud of and happy to share it with others and as like i was saying before like i mean you're telling us that like when you tell me that when you came here there's a lot of food and uh wait it froze okay sorry uh no it's just like we we when we have guests you know like mm -hmm. tend to go crazy so like everyone is say oh you have so much food it's like well we don't yes. <laughs> eat like that every day <laughs> i know i was like there's no way they're eating like this every day. uh well thank you so much this has been so fantastic um to and a lot of people just let you know a lot of people on youtube saying just thank you so much for taking us into your your home, your grandparents' home, um, sharing like your, you know, your life and your beautiful traditions and foods there, especially during this hard time when we can't, nobody can travel. It kind of makes us feel like we've gone somewhere to visit your grandparents. So please tell them that we really adore them and appreciate <laughs> sharing like their stories and that they mean a, a lot to us, you know, um, we really enjoy them. And I hope one day, to come meet them <laughs> oh definitely next time you come definitely i'll um, bring you to meet them and i mean um well thank you very much like they they wanted um me to tell you thank you as well that uh because i mean they really like it you know it's just it, <laughs> the united states for them when growing up it was something you know just mm -hmm. uh very far away and just like these things uh bring them closer and like create a connection between them and a world that uh seems so far away mm -hmm. to them and it's pretty cool and it made them really happy so it's well it's good. great i'm so glad they enjoyed it and maybe we'll do more of these maybe this is going to be a whole series um <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> okay thank you so much have a wonderful rest of your evening and we'll talk soon, Davide. Thank you very much, Lane. Okay, and everybody can join us here tomorrow and we'll have an American chef talking about uh, how she cooks radicchio.